I thought I would, you know, uh, just kind of finish up our talk on Hamvention. Um, I didn't really buy a lot of stuff. Um, I know some people really spent the big money, and I, I had a, I, I carried a good size wad of cash with me, like everybody else does. But um, really, I, I think the only, you know, the the big thing, the ARL antenna book. Oh, what year is that? Um. 1974. Oh, we lost Travis. Okay. Oh, so. yeah. Well, we didn't lose much, but... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard, I heard his dog bark, and then he went dark, so... Yeah, um, uh -oh. Maybe the dog ate the uh, jetpack. We don't know. Yeah. So if you got a 74, I got like a early 60s or a late 50 ones. It's a very similar cover to that, but it's blue. Okay. Um, and I've made antennas out of that, and guys, let me tell you, the old antenna books, if you could pick them up for a couple bucks, do it. Yep. There are some really cool antenna designs back there. And believe it or not, they're all backwards compatible, right? <laughs> the only difference is, is that a lot of these antennas don't use coax as much as we do nowadays. So no, but, that's a lot of but it yep. shows you how to make matching networks without using a balance. Yep. So yep. It, it, again. Do it. Your mind will be blowing. Your, your antenna game will be taken to a new level. I'll say that. I got some parts for my Hustler. I got that Hustler vertical antenna, and I found Excellent. a couple of parts there. And I got these little guys from, I don't know, some dealer, but they're PowerWorks. They oh, okay. are... Um, I was going to put these in the trailer um, in the back. It's uh, so 12 volt, uh, of course, I can't, uh, USB. You know, get some, I want to get some USB jacks oh, in the back of the trailer. Absolutely, yeah. And then this one, and this is the same kind of format, but it's got a power pole connector. So, yeah, I actually have to go and I got to buy some of those. I got projects, Michael. <laughs> I got I got video. I mean, I've actually started shooting video. I haven't uploaded it to you yet. Uh, I got maybe a couple minutes here while we're waiting for Travis to get back. I got four videos I'm working on. This like this is going to surprise Michael because I haven't done a video in a long time either. I know. We were talking about like when's my last quarter activation? It was yep. last October. It's been a while. It's a long while. So. Right. Um, but. Uh, stuff on the bench. I, I do have a VTVM vacuum tube voltmeter that I want to talk about. Um, I also did some work on a duplexer, uh, for your repeater guys. So if you want to learn how, a du how to tune a duplexer, we're going to talk about that. Ooh. Talk about something we run into a lot of times when we have commercial duplexers. And Alan checked, you know, he saw the videos from the, from the Dayton ham fest. So it's, um, uh... We had, I, I, I was planning on three videos. All three of them have been released now. So um, they're out there. Check them out. But they okay. did come out. Yeah, it, it's a good point. They did come out with a new a new whip. Um, it's supposed to be a little bit more robust. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get any video of it. Um, the sections are double crimped. So, the, so each individual section is a little bit longer. And uh, the top two sections on the original whip were, were relatively short compared to the rest. Those two sections are longer, are, are more uniform with the rest of the sections. So they've been able to shrink the overall size of the whip just a little bit. And then the base is, is too, it's, it's got that double crimp, so it's a little bit more robust at the base. So, but um, I need to order one of those because my big whip pulled apart the first time I went to use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah I think the same boat. My whip disappeared in Belize last year. Uh, it did not make the flight back. Everything else made it back, not the whip. <laughs> that's interesting. Nice. Yeah, that's um, so that that's yeah. We're talking about new th hamvention, new things. Um, and the second new thing um, from the the Wolf River guys is their sporty their sporty forty coil itself. They added two more turns on it to just create a little bit more inductance. And what that means is that the core, the Sporty 40 now works better with the Chameleon 17-foot uh, whip. Uh, when, I, when I first tested the, the Sporty 40 with the Chameleon whip, the, the Chameleon was a little bit short than the 213-inch than the whip. So it, 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 it resonated slightly out of band. 
They've added a little bit more, you know, so they've, they've, they've give you more uh, wiggle room in the coil so that you can now get used that 17 foot whip uh, throughout the 40 meter band. And then consequently it, with the, with their 213 inch whip, you've got now even more, you know, more length to play with. So, so when are the Wolf River guys going to have the KB9 VBR back screen door ground plane system? <laughs> <laughs> You know, Roll it, should, then forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have got. I don't know. Can you get like a big bulk roll of of like a thousand feet of window screen? Oh, yeah. And I could. I, I kind of. I, I bet you can. <laughs> I used to work at a hardware Hold store. On, yes, you can. Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably check it out on Amazon, but I will just go down to the local front of the hardware store and say, "Hey, can you just order me a whole roll? What would you charge?" KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.